Four years ago, in a small town in Georgia, a newborn was found in a plastic bag. The heartbreaking scene with the infant left the world in shock. After four years, the truth finally came out. It was her mother who had been responsible all along. Shocking, right? What led her to leave her baby like that? In this video, we will find out how and why this baby was left behind and what the future holds for both the mother and the kid. The tragic story started on June 6, 2019 in Cumming, Georgia. A couple of teenagers heard what sounded like a baby crying in the woods and got their dad to check it out. And guess what? They actually found a real infant. Following the infant's handover to the authorities, the child was given the name India by those officials. After everything went down, she was taken in by a foster family that was vetted by the Georgia Department of Family and Children's Services. The sheriff's team even shared a video showing the deputies discovering Little India, hoping someone might recognize her or provide some clue about who she was. In that intense video, it showed a deputy tearing open a yellow plastic bag and inside was this newborn baby girl. She was still all messy from being born, the umbilical cord and everything. She was rushed to a nearby hospital immediately after. Sheriff Ron Freeman was having a hard time comprehending what he was seeing. Back then, he stated that it seemed like some type of divine intervention, and he continues to have that impression to this day. I mean, just consider the following scenario. Two teenagers were out in the middle of nowhere when they heard a sound that most people would have assumed came from some kind of wild animal. However, they were so sure that this was a baby that they sent their father outside in the pitch black to investigate that it was what they heard. And they were right. Fast forward a bit. And after a lot of searching, about 10 months ago, there was finally a big sign. Through some fancy DNA tracking, the sheriff's office was able to find out who the baby's father was. The strange thing is that the dad didn't know about the pregnancy, and he's not in trouble with the law because of this. Then, after what seemed like an eternity and thousands of hours of detective work, a woman named Jawani was caught a few days ago. She wasn't even given bail, which shows how bad her alleged acts were. Sheriff Freeman took an oath four years ago that he would find out who did this, and he finally did what he said. During a news conference, he was very upset and angry. He couldn't understand how any adult, including himself, could do something like that. Our goal was simple. Identify who was responsible for trying to kill baby India. No less, no more. I mean, how could you do that to your own child? It just doesn't make sense. According to Freeman, it seems baby India was probably born inside of a car. After the birth, Jawani apparently drove around for quite a while with the baby in the car before, heartbreakingly, decided to tie her up in a plastic bag and leave her in the woods. Freeman also mentioned that all clues point toward Jawani being alone during this whole ordeal. Freeman summed it up by saying, it's hard to grasp how this all happened and no reason can make sense of such a decision. He highlighted that Jawani didn't even try to leave baby India somewhere she'd be found or under the safe haven law. In Georgia, there's this rule called the Safe Place for Newborns Act, or some folks call it the Safe Haven Law. Basically, if a mom, for whatever reason, can't keep her newborn, she's got an out. She can hand her baby over to people at medical places or even at fire or police stations, and she won't get into legal trouble. This only applies for babies that are 30 days old or younger, according to the official Georgia Department of Human Services rules. Now, here comes an interesting fact. It seems Jawani might have a pattern. According to what they are saying, she's had a few secret pregnancies and sudden births in the past. She knew she was expecting and went to some pretty wild lengths to keep it under wraps. However, Freeman also mentioned that baby India is doing well now, all happy and healthy. Jawani, from Southeast Forsyth County, has been working alongside the detectives ever since the investigation started. Now the big question is, why did Jawani do it? When Jawani's lawyer stepped up in court, she said Jawani was dealing with postpartum depression and postpartum psychosis, which, by the way, is something a ton of women face nationwide. He also mentioned that Jawani never had run-ins with the law, owns a home, and is the primary caregiver for her three kids. During the hearing, the judge listed out the charges of murder, cruelty to children in the first degree, reckless abandonment, illegal dumping of biomedical hazard waste, and aggravated assault against Miss Jawani. 
Although in the courtroom, things took an unexpected turn when the judge charged Ms. Jawani with murder. Her defense team quickly jumped in, arguing that the charge was all wrong. They pointed out that the supposed victim was still very much alive, which meant this should be an attempted murder case. Then District Attorney Penny Penn stepped up. She admitted there might have been a mix-up with the paperwork. In her defense, Ms. Juwani's lawyer said that her client is a respected 40-year-old woman in Forsyth County. She's got a home, a husband, and three kids waiting for her. And then came the big reveal. She's been fighting postpartum depression and psychosis. The lawyer passionately argued that this case shouldn't be about pointing fingers, but about shedding light on mental health issues. By the end of this speech, it seemed like he was hinting that maybe, just maybe, the community hadn't been there for Miss Juwani when she needed it the most. But District Attorney Penny Penn wasn't having any of it. She fired back, arguing that postpartum depression typically kicks in a while after the baby's born, not right away. And considering Jawani is said to have left the newborn just hours after birth, that defense seems shaky. Penn also dropped a bombshell. Apparently, after Jawani was arrested, she confessed she actually intended to harm her baby. Penn's words hung heavy in the room, suggesting the defendant had more sinister intentions for the child. Miss Jawani's case became more exciting after that. The state said she could get away with it because she had a lot of family in Texas and Ohio, and they were rich. They were also concerned that she might influence the crucial witnesses in the case, many of whom were her cousins. Judge Joshua was deep in thought. He had to think about how the defense painted the mother as an unstable person and how the state was worried that she might try to avoid justice. The fact that the event took place four years ago makes it even worse. In the end, he turned down Ms. Juwani's offer, but suggested that he might be able to help her in the future. Cases like this teach us that life is complicated and that there are often deeper side stories hiding beneath the surface. Whether it's a discussion about mental health or the complexities of the justice system, it's clear that there are many things to figure out. We'll be on the lookout for any new information about this case. What are your thoughts on the story of Miss Jawani and Baby India? Do you think there's more to it than meets the eye? Let's have a conversation in the comments below. And if you found this video intriguing, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future updates. Until next time, take care and keep engaging with us.